I don't know what I'm doing. I can hear you. Oh, there I am. <laughs> I haven't used Zoom in a while. Okay, yeah, I can hear you, so you're good to go. All right. How are you? My son is giving me a hard time, so I have to keep pushing him away. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a minute late. <laughs> no, no problem, no problem. Yeah. How's your day so far? It's all right. I'm just, you know, this is the second shift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is what my son does. This is all night. In and out, in and out, constantly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got your phone charged up? Yeah, I'm just getting my um my iPad open just, just because I'm always used to having it here. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, so we'll... um. There we go, gallery view. There we go. That's better. Plus, I want to share it on Facebook too. Okay, so once I go live, you can probably just hit it on mine, share it. Whatever. You're you're gonna you're gonna have it on your um thing, right? Yeah, so on Facebook, and then you okay. can just go there and share it. And um, so yeah, so we'll just um you know go with the flow and everything, and just you know and ride with it a little bit. That's it. That's all you can do. Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. How's the weather out right there? It was nice. We had almost 60 degrees today. It's been nice. Wow, oh, okay. It's hot out here. It was 94 today. Oh, yeah. don't, don't rub it in. No, no, that's, that was hot. We just went from all this the nice weather we was having to this. It was hot. I, I was like, I want to go to the beach so bad, but they don't want to open up the beaches yet. So yeah, yeah they was Plus, there's no it. beach in Pennsylvania, so we, I would have to go outside of Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. It, it, it is hot. Mm -hmm. all right then well we're gonna go ahead and get ready to go with the flow you got all set up uh, are you 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 on your you using your phone as the video yeah and i'm okay. using my ipad to share on social media okay and, i don't um, like the camera on my ipad so this is a way better camera yeah i don't know why yeah the ipad's cameras are i don't i, don't I have an either. ipad pro too it's not the cheap one it's the pro and it's still yeah. like I, I don't i don't like the um the cameras on the ipads either i don't know why mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if they, they, I think they gypped us a little bit on the camera. So I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I have those questions we're going to go over. And then like I said, we're going to kind of, you know, go, go with the flow on everything. And uh, uh -huh. we're just going to ride with it and, um, and, you know, just, just in, enjoy it a little bit. And hopefully we can help some people out and, um, yeah. you know, and some, you know, just get some information. That's all we can do essentially is give information and, and point people in the right direction. And hopefully they'll be able to, you know, um, go from there so yeah so let me get this here there we go. give me one second and you, you you live in pennsylvania right yes pennsylvania cool pennsylvania mm -hmm. i'm not from here though <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. All right, we'll get ready to go in a minute. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and um, um, put us live. Okay, just give me one second. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay.
All right. We are live. Yeah. We are ready to go. We're ready to share. And we are ready to take off on this evening and give some good information. All right. Well, welcome everybody. We are live on Facebook and we are, I'm so excited for this show tonight as we uh, pick up from uh, last night. And um, last night we had a, a wonderful show and, and, and we was able to really uh, talk about some things and give some good information. And so uh, we, we're, I'm excited because we're going to dive into it tonight. And what we're going to be discussing is we're going to be dealing with domestic violence. This is part two. And um, I'm excited because, um, of course, this is one of those topics. This is one of those issues that, of course, that we have to discuss. We have to talk about it, but as we alluded to last night, not just talk about it and discuss it, but to take action and to move into a place where we can really see some definite change and um, seek restoration for the people that are abused and bring those abusers to a place where they are accountable for their actions and where they are not um, held up on a pedestal and where they are not you know, uh, given um, a free pass because nobody's life is is meant to be, um, you know, abused and, and, and mistaken and, and uh, misused and all that stuff like that. So um, I'm excited tonight because we have Annette Perez with us out of Pennsylvania, and mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to have her. Um, uh, we have been discussing this this issue. We've been talking about this very topic. And um, last night we had Dr. Nichols on and, and we were talking about it from a male's perspective. But tonight we're going to talk about it from the perspective of someone that has survived and that's gone through and that's overcame domestic violence. And, and before we uh, go any further, let me just go ahead and read my disclaimer as I do all the time. The views expressed on a word of encouragement online show, Gary Adams and his guest does not reflect the views of Zoom, Facebook or YouTube. So I just want to go ahead and get that out of the way. And once again, we have Annette Perez with us. Uh, she is an overcomer. She uh, overcame this. She survived this. And um, she has a wonderful uh, testimony that she can share. But not only did she overcome it, not only did she survive this, but now she's taken what she went through and she is using it to help others that are going through it as well. Because this is something that it is, you know, oftentimes people think that domestic violence is something that you, it happens and then the next day it's over and you just move out and then you just go along and then, you know, go ahead and get your two-story house and a white uh, picket fence with a dog and a goldfish and a cat. But there's much more to this and, and there's, there's so much uh, uh, that entails this whole healing process and this process of, of being made whole from all of the mess that you have to go through. And so uh, tonight, Annette, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, why don't you go ahead and just real quick open up and share something about yourself. What are you doing uh, right now as it relates to, um, um, you know, just how you're, uh, just what, what projects you got going on? Talk, talk to us about what you got going on. Well, I'm Annette Perez. Everybody knows me as AP on social media. Um, you know, I'm a mom of five, um, divorced, been through a domestic abuse situation, um, took that situation, as you just nicely said, and made it into something good, um, which, you know, your the scripture says that, you know, take whatever was for evil can be made for something good. So that's what I'm trying to do. Still healing. Yes. but trying to make the best of it. So I have my AP ministries and underneath that I do my AP coaching, um, which is enlightenment coaching, life coaching. Um, I'm a part of that with the Atlanta Boxing Association. And I also have my virtual office business that I do. And then my biggest pet peeve is my truth movement because that's really where my advocacy comes out of. Even though people believe it's my AP ministries, it really started evolving more when I started my truth movement. So that's something that I endeavor to hopefully spread globally um, because it's, it's, all, it's all about bringing awareness to all the injustices going around in the world and yes. those that are suffering in silence during those you know, terrible times in their life. Um, I, and I, that comes from my experience. So um, that's just about me right now currently because of the pandemic, I'm on a furlough with my job <laughs> <laughs> so i've been like just doing even more and more advocacy because i had to take a break because you know overwhelming job and five children single mom you know you had i had to take a sacrifice and, and put a little bit 
of time away from my advocacy as far as social media, but I always was doing it in the background. Yes. So now I'm, I'm actually coming back to the forefront and I'm going to try to make a commitment to make it consistent, even though um, I might have to be back at work one day soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Now you mentioned something that you were at the boxing club and I know you and I, we have talked and we've discussed and, and you are, you know, kind of the go-to uh, for spiritual support for those mm -hmm. in that particular boxing club. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that. Just a well, little bit. Um, my, a friend of mine, Wayman Harley here on Facebook, he's in Atlanta, Georgia. He's an awesome, wonderful man. Um, very faithful man. And he just started, we started connecting on Facebook for almost the last I don't know, nine months. And then he finally invited me into what he was doing. I told him I used to be an assistant boxing coach. I used to be involved in a boxing, a community boxing center when I was married, my ex-husband. So that was something that I love because I love health, wellness, and fitness. So that mm -hmm. was like all wrapped up in one. Plus I was able to help at-risk youth. So he loved it. And I told him, you know, um, if he ever wanted my input, I'd be glad to share. And we just started connecting. And then now here comes, no, nine, 10 months later, he put me on the uh, Atlanta Boxing Association as uh, a manager and also a life coach to the boxers that might need help. Oh, that's so, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping this all opens up because we had it all together and now the pandemic happened. And so, but I believe that no matter what, if it's something that's for good, it's gonna, it's gonna evolve to something, Most you know, no matter what. Yeah, but oh, boxing yeah. is, I love my favorite sport is boxing. <laughs> right, boxing, okay. That, that, boxing's a good sport. You know, I take my yeah. football and then my UFC, but yeah, boxing is up there. I can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's wonderful. You know, um, I'm so glad that you're able to join me on this because, you know, when I, when I, this came to my heart, you know, I thought about two people. I thought about Dr. Nevis and I thought about you and I reached out to mm. you. And so I'm so glad that you accepted my invite to be on here and to talk about this. And, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, let, let's jump into something a little bit that we touched on, you know, right now you mentioned about the pandemic and having to be home, you know, you're now, you know, at home with your children and you're there with them and, you know, 24 seven, you're the teacher, you're the, you know, you're the coach, you're the principal, you're the counselor, you're your <laughs> mom, you know, you're, you're everything. Now I, I want to take that same scenario and, and, and I want you, let, let's talk about what about that person and 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 as you know we we know men are abused as well but my focus is on the women that are abused because statistics show that 85 percent of all domestic violence and abuse is happening to women happening to the female so that's my target that's my that's that's what my focus is not to you know say that the men that are abused aren't aren't, aren't uh, you know significant but i'm focusing on the females now mm -hmm. what about you know we're in this situation where people have to be at home all the time now and and we got these stay at home orders what about the women that are constantly now at home with their abuser yeah yeah and that's something that's near and dear to me which is why i went so hard now continuing to advocate and show and share awareness on social media i mean we did that um that i don't know what it was called um that thing that went viral on TikTok. I can't, don't rush. It was a don't rush challenge. I, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, because it's, it's, we're home. You know, one of the scenes really got me because it's the lady that actually ran it, Dorothea Robinson. She's in a bed with a black eye and she's mm -hmm. covered. That's what's going on right now. Somebody's yeah. in their bed hiding behind covers because there's someone who's become volatile because they feel chained to that home that they're in. Yeah. And, and from my experience, I, I could get that. I get, I understand it. Like mine was mo mostly spiritual and mental abuse, but I did have some physical encounters. And, you know, to me, it was like my ex-husband used to create an argument to get out of the house to, con to continue to do what he was doing, which was womanizing and cheating on me. But he would say that because we were pastors, he would say that he was out doing God's work and ministering to people. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but, you know, that's neither here nor there. The, 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 the point I'm making is they don't have that opportunity. These men don't have the opportunity now to go out and have an outlet to do whatever they do, whatever it may be when they run yeah. out of this house. Mm -hmm. So now the pressure on top of the fact that they, they're controlling this woman, they can't even control their own environment now mm -hmm. by doing whatever they want. Yes. Imagine the blows that person is going to suffer emotionally or maybe even physically 
because the, these abusers don't have the way they want at this very moment in their life. They don't have that outlet any longer. The no, outlet is not there. They can't go to the bar. They yeah. can't go hang out with their side chick. They can't go hang out with their boys. They can't do anything that they normally mm -hmm. do when they, they go out and become volatile and run, you know, okay. it's a, or go get high or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. They just can't do that right now. So the problem is, you know, how many women are out there that are unreported yes. that are getting right now abused in silence, you know, mm -hmm. and I suffered in silence for a very long time. So it left me very burned in my heart. You know, even this pandemic, it still triggers me because it, even though I've, I'm accustomed to being a homebody because I have my kids. Mm -hmm. But now it's like this pandemic is forcing me to be in isolation. Mm -hmm. So think about the psyche of an, a woman that's abused. I'm being controlled by this pandemic telling me to stay home. Mm -hmm. You understand, like, so it's yeah. things that trigger, you know, I, people don't understand what triggers are when it comes to domestic abuse or domestic violence. And I mean, I, I've dealt with a couple of men since I left my ex-husband and, and I, I had to leave them alone because most people don't understand what triggers are yeah, yeah. And, and how to deal with the trigger. And see, right now, this pandemic or maybe still fresh, they are juggling with these because you know you got to understand most women are isolated or bound to mm -hmm. their home and when they're being abused yes. they're bound by themselves or with their children you know mm -hmm. so imagine what this must feel like for for all the ones that are that had suffered and have come through all something really thought poking for us to say hey why why is it got to be like that why can't yeah. we do something about it you know mm -hmm. and i do believe there's probably more percentages that are not being reported look i didn't report anything for 18 years so did you say 18 years i was with this person for almost 18 years and i did not become as the vocal person that i am now <laughs> until i left and then even when i left i it took me some time to even start getting into detail you know and August of this year will be two years that I left. So, wow. yeah. So well, congratulations. You know, thank you. That, that, thank that. you. So these are the mm -hmm. things that, you know, um, be sensitive to someone who's in the situation and who's gotten out of the situation because mm -hmm. the triggers don't go away that quick. Yes. You know, I'm going on almost two years and I still, there's still things that just kind of yes. pull that switch and, you know, it doesn't last as long but it's still there. So when we're dealing with domestic abuse and domestic violence in and out of the situation, you know, we don't have enough sensitivity out there in the public mm -hmm. for an awareness as to how to handle those situations. Yes. Now, let, let me, you, you, you know, you touched on something and, you know, I, I, I've noticed a couple of times domestic violence and domestic abuse. And one of the things that we talked about last night, and, and I wanted to kind of reiterate that is domestic violence is the willful intimidation, physical assault, mm -hmm battery, mm. sexual assault, and or other abusive behavior as part of a systematic pattern of power and control. And that's mm. the aim of, of, of the typical abuser is to yeah. intimidate, to control, I call it the manipulation, intimidation, the isolation, the, the domination, those mm -hmm. things that, that, that tend to, tr to hold an individual captive, uh, in other words, place them in bondage. Now, um, I shared a story last night and, and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, you know, I remember when I was a pastor and I'm retired now, but I remember when I was a pastor and um, I, I had been a pastor maybe two or three years. And I remember receiving a call at, at our church, at the church office and spoke to a lady who I had spoken at their church probably like a week prior to this call. Uh, mm -hmm. She called me and she was in tears and she began to share how her husband, the pastor, was abusing her physically. And she had nowhere to turn. She had no one to talk to. Long story short, we ended up, you know, getting things together, putting money together and, and got her to a safe place and mm. um, ended up, you know, of course, confronting the pastor, talking to him. And and, and uh, that led to nothing. Uh, they, the association that they were part of pretty much uh, disassociated themselves from her, made her to be the bad person and put, put him up on a pedestal. And, and this is something that um, unfortunately is happening more often than not. And I know your story is, you know, you was married to a pastor. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, you know, 
and, and, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, domestic violence doesn't care about your status, your position, your mm -hmm. spirituality, your money, not whether you're big, tall, short, small, light skin, mm -hmm. dark skin, long hair, no hair. It does not matter about mm -hmm. any of that because, you know, when, when an individual makes up their mind to, to, to perpetrate those acts and, and, and th that intimidation, that, denom that, that, do that domination, they're going to do it regardless. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to talk a little bit about, you know, yeah. what, you know, kind of the beginning, you know, let me ask yeah. you this before you talk about that. Let me, uh, this is something that I've always been curious to, to know um, when you, you first got married. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know you fall in love and woo -hoo, everything is, 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 is wonderful. Was there any signs, any red flags that would lead you to think that he could do these things to you? Was there any red flags? Most definitely. Most definitely, I ignored it because I didn't fall in love. I fell in control. Ooh. So that's why I overlooked the red flags. Because, see, women got to know the difference between being wooed, being controlled, and being in a, in a love state. You know, the woo is like, you know, you're fascinated and all that great mm -hmm. stuff. But he went maxim maximum because he went into this mechanism of control that was real smooth. And so you got to understand when these pastors do what they do, like you said, with this young lady, their congregation is always watching the man, <laughs> not the woman. So yeah. they're praising and elevating this man as if he's just an equal equality to God, which I know most people in their mind say, I don't do that, but yeah. you are. But trust me. Yeah. I'm, and so these people, when I came to the church, I was in the world. I was living alternative lifestyle. I was doing a lot of crazy stuff. Mm. So. But I was taking care of myself. I was, I was living okay. I was yes. good. I had no struggles. Mm -hmm. And so when I met him, he just kind of drew me in with this prophetic ministry thing that he had. And he had hundreds of people that followed him. Young, old, middle age, and teenage all followed him. And they were all raving about him. Praise him. So I'm sitting, you know, I'm going to sit back. I'll sit down and watch. And I'm like, wow, he must be legit. Because, you know, all <laughs> these people... Yeah. You know, imagine how people feel at these mega churches. But anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so they're sitting there like he must be legit, you know, whatever. And but that's how I felt, and that's where I fell into a mechanism of control because mm. now that I, I I come away from it, looking in that glass, it was like wow, he's controlling everybody in that church, mm. everybody. So he's abusing everybody. So when you say Domestic violence and a domestic abuse. Domestic abuse is something that is mutual with amongst someone that you care, your loved ones, or whatever it may be. This pastor becomes your loved one. This pastor becomes a father figure to some people. Mm -hmm. So then you feel familiar. So here you go, domestic abuse all over mm -hmm. again in the church mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. these type, these prototypes, I'm not saying all ministers, so let me put the disclaimer out there. Yeah, yeah. If I had someone got upset because I said, because a minister, not all, the ones that I've experienced, mm -hmm. which was my ex. So these type of people are very charismatic and, you know, they will win people over. So when I was in my situation and I broke out, same situation as your friend, the church turns their back on you. They believe his story. He starts to slander me, blah, blah. You know how the story goes. Yes. Yes. So, you know, then I'm left by myself with five children to fend for. And he doesn't help financially even to this day, much, but bear bare minimums, you know? Yeah. So that's where, you know, I wish I would have met a pastor like you that would have said, Hey, look, I'm like, I got this. I'm going to do this for you. And that. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it let, wasn't. Let me ask you this here. Now, you know, you were, so in that, you're the first lady, you know, as, as, you know, we, as they're in the church, you're the first lady and, and the pastor, the spiritual father to many, um, he is, you know, doing his thing. He is, he's ministering to people. He's helping people. And he is, you know, uh, how, how did you feel on a Sunday morning? I'm trying to get this in my mind. How did you feel on a Sunday morning? And you knew you had to go to church and in and, and all actuality, put on this act that everything is okay. Because yeah. I often say, I remember when I used to preach, I would say, when you, if you really want to know about a, a preacher, you don't look at him, you look at his wife. And, you know, and, and, and how, what was going through your mind? I mean, what, what, what was that like? Take us through the process of a Sunday morning. Oh boy. Um, well, I have to say, you know, I was very fascinated with his charisma mm -hmm. because, you know, as a child, I was sexually abused and all of that. So I was always looking for that father figure and also that attention, that mm -hmm. proper attention. 
Yeah. So, I mean, part of it was me and my own personal issue involved with his personal control issues. Right. So I say all of that to clarify because I don't want people to think I'm beating this man up, but yeah. I have my own flaws too. Mm. They just weren't the right time to connect those two flaws. Yeah. It just it turned out to be an 18 year long drawn out experience. But on a Sunday, it was like, okay, when I was always feeling convicted that I was doing something wrong because mm. that's the way he would downplay me. He would talk me down and he would get, and, but then he would, he would know how to do a one, two, hit you with the uppercut and then come back and act like he saved you. You know what I mean? Mm. It's, it's, oh, yeah. it's very oh, yeah. hard. Uh, it's very hard to explain like gaslighting, mm. huge gaslighter. And he's a narcissist. So at the end of the conversation, it's got to be always about him. Once mm -hmm. he gaslights you to tell you, hey, you know, you're off, your spirit is off, you know, you're not thinking right, you know, you're not, in, you know, you're, you're, you need to go pray and, you know, you need to get your spirit right and da 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 da, whatever. This is all the stuff that's accumulating mm -hmm. throughout the week. So by Sunday, I'm taking a deep breath, you know, <laughs> I'm looking all cute, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, dress I'm dressed in fabulous, okay, yeah. wearing nice clothes, heels, looking cute. You know, and I'm, I'm just walking in representing him because I thought that was my role biblically was to not show your pain, not to show your problems in front of the people, mm -hmm. you know, deal with your stuff at home, show all this love. It was a facade. It was a whole long drama. It was like the Oscars every mm. Sunday. Wow. Okay. And the award went to me and him because he was playing his part. I was playing my part. There were times we wouldn't even go home in the same car and people not, saw this and they didn't, they didn't put it together. You know, and, and then there was times when we'd be in a car, we'd get home, psh, separate. You know, it was it was so not what we were portraying in front of the, the podium and the, of that mm. church, you yeah. know. There were times where, you know, we had physical altercations. There was one time that he strangled me. And it was it was almost spring, almost into the spring, about to be 70 degrees. Mm. Here I am going to church with a turtleneck, long sleeve shirt. Because mm. the bruises from his handprints, I, I bruise very easy, and I have bruise marks on my arms. So you know, mm. and I'm I'm up there praising the Lord, and I was I was part of the the worship team. I was one of the leaders of the worship team. I used to sing with the worship team and lead. So I would be up there with my turtleneck, praising the Lord, how, smile. You know, I knew how to play my part, mm. and that's why it's very hard for people to believe that a person was abused. Because when you go around your family, you're like, hey, you know, well, we're it's all good. You know, you're kind of covering, your, you know, yeah. keeping yourself. And you notice, you know, a little more reserved. People are not observing that. And when I'm at church, I'm like, attention. I was mm -hmm. attention. You know, it was it was just one of those things where it was like formality, formality, you know, military. And you go in, you do your part. My kids are watching me, but then seeing me at home in a whole different state of mind. So they don't have no belief system or faith because they see oh, yeah. a fraud. They saw a big yeah. fraud. Yeah. So, you know, this affects everything. And then when you leave because you're being abused and then you finally start saying this stuff, then the congregation thinks you're full of mess because they see you smiling, hugging and being all, everything is all good, you know, but they don't understand that that Bible he kept throwing in my face, dominating me over uh, being a woman that's supposed to be subservient to this man but you weren't even doing your part. You know, you were mm. sleeping with women in the church. Mm. You know, you were abusing your wife at home. You weren't spending time with your children, you know, and you're going up there prophesying to people. You're calling me a prophetess, him a prophetess. We're a prophetic ministry. It was pretty darn pr pathetic. Pathetic. To do that. Prophetic, yeah. yeah, because you're doing that and you're hurting people, not only your wife and your children, you are hurting people, give them false you know, pretenses about what's going to happen in their life when you're, you can't, you've been in the ministry a long time. You cannot sit there and say vain things to people mm -hmm. and they believe in you like you're God. Like yes. they really believe that he was God. And I see this, I mean, all over social media, on television and all, all around the world as how people are not really serving a creator. They're serving a man. And that's what I did. I served a man for almost 18 years because I thought I, by serving him, I was serving God. No, I'm Let not. Let me ask you this, Annette. So for 18 years, you know, you're married. So however many of those years, you all, your husband, he's the pastor. Uh, you're the first lady of the church and, and you, you all are sitting there and we have all these spiritual people. And it, that at any point in time, did anyone ever come to you and just ask you, 
uh, honey, how are you doing? No, it was always about him. It was always about him. He put himself in a, in a light where he was so divine and in tune with God that the messengers were coming to him. The angels were coming to him. He was getting all this prophetic word and he was so in tune and he was like, you know, he, this is a statement. I think it's a very arrogant statement. He would say, you know, if I die today, I would want to come back as myself because mm. God loves me that much that he shares all this great information with me and this revelation that most people can't handle. You don't say that. <laughs> like, yeah. But this is a narcissistic gaslighting type of abuse. So, so you know, you, you use the term about, gaslighting a few times. Go ahead and explain for those that may not understand what gaslighting is. Um, kind of give us a brief uh, description of what that means, gaslighting. What, what, what does that look like? Just, in, just basically, it's someone, okay, so let's just say, Gary, hey, you hurt me, mm -hmm. and you don't want to accept that you hurt me, and you don't want to confront it with me. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn the gaslight down. So you're going to start dimming the light, mm -hmm. my light, so that you can dim diminish me so that I could feel like a crumb and forget what you did wrong mm, yeah. and then start dealing with what I'm doing all of a sudden wrong to you that I never did to you, so you know? It's, it's, so it's, it's a deflective type of mechanism. So the movie Gaslighting, I would recommend it's free. It's on YouTube. It's from mm -hmm. the 50s or 60s. I watched it to understand it. If you watch the movie, you'll completely get what I'm saying. But basically the guy was putting a little light and it was old in days you have to use gas mm -hmm. and he would purposely diminish the gas mm -hmm. and the lady's thinking she's going nuts because she's like I, I you're telling me it's full bloom it's not you know but you have to see the movie yeah. but basically that's what it is it's just basically removing yourself from a situation to and heighten and, and enlighten someone into this place where they feel so bad mm -hmm. that you're never going to be wrong you right. know so and he was a he was a talker. He was a minister. So you know we we yeah. preach. We know how to we, we know how to talk. Yeah. yeah. So he would he would talk his way out of it by demeaning me and and making me feel like a crumb. So at no point in time, no one at the church uh, thought to come to you and just say, "Hey, how are you doing? What? Why are you? You know?" Because I I, I watch people, and and a lot okay. of it has to do with my profession. I watch. I look. I read details. I look at body language. I look at hands. I see how people are responding and acting, if they're twitching, if they're making unnecessary movements. Now, at any point in time that I, I, I'm trying to fathom this in my head that no other, at least woman or another female said, so, honey, why are you wearing a, a turtleneck? It's, you know, it's, it's, it's 70 degrees outside. It's 80 degrees, whatever. So, it's so, so now I understand what you're saying about the control. And, 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 and let me say this to those that are watching and those that are watching live now and those that will watch this telecast, this broadcast uh, later, you know, I am all uh, for, 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 for going to church and I'm all for doing those things. I'm, I, I yeah. am definitely not an individual that's bitter and has turned my heart against God. I love God with all of my heart and I do believe in serving him, but I do want you to understand. And this is what I would tell people when I was a pastor, I'm a man, I'm flawed. I have the same issues that you have. <laughs> I have the same struggles that you have. I'm, a, you know, even to this day, God still works on me with my patience. Um, I don't like long lines. I get irritated if, <laughs> if somebody is in the 15 item line or less and they got 22 items, you know, and I'm wondering why the cashier is not saying something, you know, so I'm flawed. And so I understood that and I yeah. do understand that. But I want, I want, you know, especially the, the ladies to know and to understand that when you go to church and you submit yourself to the leader of that house, that pastor, Remember, if you are married, your husband, he comes first. So the pastor should not control you, tell you when to go, when to come, or anything like that, uh, or, 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 or get into your, your personal private business at home with you and your spouse, your kids, all that kind of stuff. Do not fall for that. In fact, if that's happening, if that's manifesting, you better get your Bible, get your, your purse, get your coat, grab your kids by the hand and get out of there because that <laughs> is not God at all. No. So uh, I, I want to just drop that in there. And then I also want to say once again to churches, I, I implore you, I encourage you, I beg you to put some things in place. So that when that female, that woman comes to you and say, my husband, my boyfriend, or my intimate partner is abusing me. You just don't sit up there and say, okay, well, let me lay hands on your daughter and let's just believe God. Uh, we can do that, but we Come need on. to do something, have a plan in place to get them some help 
so that they are, they are removed from that situation. Last night, we talked about the whole pray and stay mentality. You know, Annette, was that something that, you know, you thought, okay, I'm just going to pray and stay and just believe God? <laughs> no, I was, you know, uh, he would, when he knew that I was resilient and sticking to my story that I know he was sleeping around with ex and with certain people in the mm -hmm. church. Yeah, yeah. I won't, I, I won't say, you know, so it was, it was, it was, look, you, you try to strangle me, you try to hurt me because, you know, you're messing around with these people and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not the brunt of the, the, the beat down of it. But right. no, I feel that I've just lost my steps. You just went blank on me. Oh yeah. I'm good. Are you, I'm here. Are you with me? Yeah. Bring me back to your question. Cause I just lost my. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, I was just, I was just asking about the whole, um, you know, um, what, what was I saying? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was about the, the whole mindset of, you know, the pray and stay mentality, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. um, you know, um, uh, you know, just pray and stay and believe God, because I was saying that, you know, uh, I was hoping that churches all over put something in place you know, a plan of action that if this takes, because, you know, this is, no, a, 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 there's no, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no plan of action. My ex-husband used, there used to be women that used to come to him about their marital issues that he would end up having affairs with. Mm -hmm. Wow. And this is, listen, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. These women are vulnerable. These ministers are not dealt with, with their flesh mm -hmm. and they make it worse. So how do you implement a plan of action when you're just as much as a culprit as the abuser? Mm -hmm. Because you're abusing that situation that person is coming to you in confidence with. So, you know, the I used to not think I had to pray through. I used to be afraid to. Oh, okay. So I was more afraid to leave. So I just stayed because mm -hmm. he always told me that I was nothing and I, I'll just take care of my kids, even though I was running the business and all this other stuff in the background, mm -hmm. you know, implementing programs and stuff. And, but you know, he just made demean me, made me feel belittled. Like I wasn't doing anything and I was just taking care of children, but you're getting, making babies with me. So I won't leave you. So how am I supposed <laughs> yeah. to work that out? And I'm trying to follow God's word saying that I'm not supposed to leave you or whatever and not have, you know, yeah, okay. not, not take to have children with you. I'm, that's my job. Right. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. what you're mm -hmm. saying. But he used to really use demean me and belittle me to the point where I was afraid. I was afraid to leave. I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to survive without my children. So that's really my um, afraid to, to leave. It wasn't about praying and stay. It was more so out of fear. Yeah. And, and you know, the, and, and once again, domestic abuse, domestic violence, uh, the main part of that is that control being able to control the mind, mm -hmm. you know, uh, making you feel less than who God created you to be. You know, nobody mm -hmm. wants you or, or you'll be less than if you leave me, if I'm not with you, I complete you. Uh, That's don't right. you, you know, and, 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 you know, I, I, I've heard all of these different stories and talked to people that have gone through these situations as it relates to uh, domestic violence and being abused by intimate partners and the whole, mm -hmm. you know, the putting down, you know, look at you, who's going to want you and, and to make an individual feel that the only way that I can, can be complete as if I'm with him. And, right. and that's part of that control. That's part of that manipulation. Yeah. And, and I want to encourage people that are in relationships, do not allow anyone to manipulate you and to make yeah. you think that you're less than you are. Dr. Nichols said something last night that I thought was very telling. He said, you know, just because you're married, it doesn't mean that you lose your individuality or your identity. And mm -hmm. that's something that we need to remember. Mm -hmm. You can be married and share the same last name, but you're right. still a net. You know, two I'm still Gary. <laughs> two entities and not, not, because, you know, this is, I'm glad you just brought that up mm -hmm. because this is where my manipulative doctrine that he gave me was, mm -hmm. oh, the two shall become one. Mm -hmm. So I was one in myself and him. Like I only saw me through him. Do you mm -hmm. understand that? Yeah. Do you oh, understand yeah. how manipulative the scripture could be to people mm -hmm. and how they can abuse it? Yeah. And then I'm, um, so I couldn't see myself beyond him because He's like, he's, I'm the man, I'm the leader of the church, I'm this, I'm that. It was constant berating about his position in the church and his role and how he's God's prophet. And, you know, he has these standards he has to live by and all this, this and that. It, listen, that don't mean nothing. Hmm. If you're married to someone, you leave your position at the door, buddy. Right. Because when you come into that home, you're a husband. Right. Yes. You know, you're not, you don't bring me that prophet stuff. And <laughs> say it's the Lord. Yeah. and all that garbage because you know what 
you need to learn. There's so many different characteristic traits to even a, a, a amount to what God is to anybody. Mm -hmm. So how many characteristic traits you have to carry to be a minister, to be a father, to be a husband, to be a friend. Yes. Come on. We want to just crunch it all together and make the woman sit down and be quiet mm -hmm. and let him lead. And we have no role, no voice, no positioning, no nothing. We just baby, we're just here producing babies and that's it. So let me ask you this. At any point in time, did you ever go to anybody and, and, and talk about, you know, hey, in confidence, was there any other female in, in, in the church that you felt that you can go and just talk to and that, you know, hey, this person I think will have my back and let me just share this. But there was no one. I tried to, I tried to trust a couple of women mm -hmm. and they were such betrayers. One is mm -hmm. still there. Mm -hmm. One actually witnessed him curse me out. Mm -hmm. She was coming to my house because she used to take the garbage out. She used to help us with do my grocery shopping because I just had two babies back to back at that point. Mm -hmm. And she walked in through the deck in his little man cave and he was blown out at me. And she heard, she heard him call me, you know, some choice words. Mm -hmm. She's still in that church today. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and so that was the day I was able to say, you know, I'm sorry. I apologize for his behavior. Basically, I was like, but you know, and I was like, you know, maybe I just need to try. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is how my life has been for a very long time. And she seemed very sympathetic, but never, never back, covered my back. And then the other couple that I was friends with, um, same thing, same thing. Just they left the church, mm -hmm. but they backstabbed me. I tried to talk to the so-called bishop of the church. He did nothing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just kept silent. I had no voice. They yeah. muted me. And once again, this is why I want to really say to churches and to pastors. And, and I have a lot of pastor friends to this day. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to put something in place. Now you think about yeah. this, we're, we're in this pandemic with this COVID-19 and it is yep. hit and, 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 the, mm -hmm. and the thousands of lives that have been lost. And we see this mad rush to, you know, to, to, to get things in place to, to help. Mm -hmm. and, and our government is dropping, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know how many billions of dollars into trying to stimulate the economy. So, Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the domestic violence number, the amount of women that are abused daily, monthly, annually, why is this cause not put at the forefront the way that it should? This, this is something dear to, to my heart because I, I've, mm -hmm. I've seen this stuff. I've, I've witnessed this stuff. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and let me just say this, brothers, there is no reason for you to put your hands on a woman outside to love her, hold her, caress her. Hello. If it gets that bad, you know, walk away, walk out the uh -huh. house, go to yeah. your boy's house for a minute or two, whatever the case may be. Because one of the things that, that and I want to say this, in working in the law enforcement, and I, I'm telling you, if you go to jail or you go to prison, you will be put in protective custody with the child molesters, with the rapists, Ooh. because criminals <laughs> do not like women, men that beat women. I'm telling you that right now. Mm. Um, they will get you. They will get you. So, uh, but my, 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 my hope is, as, I'm, as we're talking about this, is that you know, churches would really make a concerted effort to say, we're gonna really make this a focus so that when people do come, we can mm -hmm. help them. And yeah. now, and, and, and um, you, you touched on something. You said using the scriptures to manipulate. And, you know, one of the things that I, I want to I address there is people oftentimes do that. They'll take mm -hmm. a scripture. Mm -hmm. And we said last night, you know, we know what the scripture says as it relates to divorce. That the only, in essence, the just cause for divorce is when there is infidelity. And people mm -hmm. will take that and they'll ride that to, to the grave. Mm -hmm. And there is no way in the world anybody can tell me that God that created us, loves us, would say, it's okay, Annette, for you to go ahead and be abused. Just stay there and get socked in the eye, get cussed out, mm -hmm. get belittled, get, you know, have all your self-esteem taken from you, have all of your self-worth, you know, stripped from you. But just stay there because I love you. I don't think that's God. And mm -hmm. I would say to anyone that's in an abusive situation mm -hmm. and that they say, hey, I'm staying for the kids. No, leave for the kids. Thank Leave you. for the kids. Remove yourself from that situation and be safe. And, you know, you don't have to stay and be a punching bag. You're, you, you don't have everlasting across your forehead. You don't have to be a punching bag 
while he's working on his deliverance and while he's working on his, you know, trying to get things straight. Don't mm -hmm. do that. That's another form of manipulation. Yep. And that whole thing about the intimidation and the domination. Now, mm -hmm. Annette, so you're in this marriage for 18 years and you, you're going through this. This is happening. This is real life to you. What was the day like? What went through your mind? What, what made you say, you know what? Enough is enough. Yeah, well, we were already living separate lives, but in the same house. Mm -hmm. um, I had a January of 2018 um we had a shut-in at our church for you know new year's shut-in yeah. you know the oh, prophecies yeah, are, he gonna prophesy we don't know about the new year and our yeah. new life so you know that um new year's did not settle well with me and you know i actually didn't we didn't do it overnight or none of that and i just it just wasn't right mm -hmm. and i was i finally put my foot down i found out about another female and i was just done Mm -hmm. I was done, like, I was about to be on a nervous breakdown, like, to wow. a brink of a nervous breakdown. So I shut down, and I just told him, I was like, don't, I don't want you sleeping in the room. I don't want you sleeping in the bed. I don't want to have no relations with you. I don't have, I don't know what's going to happen, but you got to stay away from me. Right. And he still denied the girl. And there was two elders of the church that were affiliated with the church that were co-signing his lies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I tried to reach out to them. They did the same thing everybody else did. So here we go, a couple of weeks in, he, he, we, me and my children have not been going to the church. No, it's actually been a couple months. Mm -hmm. And we stopped going to the church. And he had a big problem with that because the picture portrait family yeah. is gone now. Mm -hmm. I don't pull the mask off of him. Right. So he had to, he, he didn't know what to tell the congregation. So there was a, they started to build up. Mm. I'm just giving you the momentum. Yes. So the build up started because I stopped going to the church and I was done. I was like, I don't want to go there and see another female looking at me all sideways. And I don't know why. And then you're going to make me feel like I'm crazy gaslighting me, yeah. telling me that I'm delusional. Mm -hmm. So I'll, for, you know, save to save you the pain in me. I'm not going back. Right. You know? So there was a momentum building up and then he wanted to bring my son, my young, my, his only son, because we only have one son. Mm. And he was like, you know, I'm taking him to church. So he's flexing his muscle and trying to threaten me. Mm. And I was like, you know, something in my, my heart said, just say, okay. I said, okay. So he was like, darn, she's not arguing with me, you know? So he went to church with my son, caused a lot of massive of confusion to my poor kid. But what was I supposed to do? I'm yeah. still with him. I'm still bound to this house and, and his rules. He had already taken me off the books of the church. He took me off the bank accounts, everything. Yeah. Mind you, we're not divorced. We're still in the same house. We just don't know what the heck is going to happen. Yeah. I'm completely deprived of money, which is what the first thing they do, oh, abusers yeah. do. They I'm pull your money. card. Yep. So there we go. Now I'm, I'm making me more afraid to leave because he knew I was on my way out. Mm -hmm. I've been di discussing this with domestic violence in, in my area for a few for a few months. So here it is. I've been going through this rotation with him for months, and then it came to August. Okay, so you're talking from January to August. I devised my exit plan, but I was afraid to leave. Mm -hmm. So when the day that he took my son to the church, my oldest daughter was she hates him, and she was like, "He's not taking my brother." to this church so that he can lie and manipulate him the way he lied mm. and manipulated me. Mm. He's going to turn your son or our, my brother against you like he tried to do with me and, your, and my sisters. Mm -hmm. So here, I, and now mind you, this is the first time my daughter ever admitted this. Wow. wow. So you got to understand, I'm on the brink of a breakdown. I'm hearing my child telling me some truths that I knew in my heart. And so I'm like, wow. So she, he went, he was going to go back to the church again. And my son now, now that he played his game in the morning, he wanted to go out to do his thing. Right. But my son was latched on to him. No, daddy, I want to go with you. Mm. And he was like, he was like so annoyed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but he couldn't say no to my son because he had to play his part. Right. My daughter got very angry and texted him and then told him, you're not taking my brother. You, you know, I don't trust you. So he gets in the car, puts my son in the car. She runs out, tries to open the door while he's moving and tells him to get her brother out of the car mm -hmm. because she does not want him around him alone. Mm -hmm. so could you imagine this is, she was only 14. Wow. 
And I was like, oh my gosh. So he calls me up cursing at me. She better not ever do that. You need to put her in check, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I was like, look, what you need to do is ask her why she feels that way. Right, right. I said, I will, I will let her know to respect her father, but you got to ask her how, why she don't respect him. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to hear none of that. Yes. So he texted her that he was going to kick her blankly blank when he got home and that, you know, he was, she was going to have a problem. So he says this to your 14 year old daughter because your 14 year old daughter is now speaking up for you, her brother Thank and herself, you. because she has been essentially muted all these. This, Thank you. This. And so a grown man texts his daughter, 14 year old daughter and says, I'm going to kick your, you know what? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because 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 he can't accept a narcissist cannot accept truth yeah. about himself, mm -hmm. and so she refused to you know bow out. So when he finally came home, I guess he got into his mode where he was going to gaslight her, which he did, mm -hmm. and he apologized, you know, which he never does. But he knows that he's at I'm at that breaking point. Mm -hmm. So he apologized to her but then she came to me in the mo in the morning and said i'm really confused i'm like why because she didn't feel like it was sincere she felt like he had an ulterior motive and right. and i'm like oh my child is thinking you know like mm -hmm. i don't have to bash him because she knows it yeah. and you know she just was like i'm not comfortable with him i don't this and that or whatever and i just kind of lost it I lost it and I called my sister because she works for the domestic violence. She's a advocate there. And I said, look, um, I need to talk to my advocate. And I was wailing on the phone and he actually witnessed me almost having this breakdown and he left. And as soon as he left, I called the domestic violence and I said, listen, I can't do this no more. She's like, are you ready to leave? I said, yes, I am. And if I would have thought for 10 seconds, I would have not done it. Yeah. Mind you that for the last two weeks, the, the only two people that I was close to, I was only retaining one good member of the church as my friend. They started putting certain things away like clothes and stuff because this is what domestic violence tells you to do. Mm -hmm. I was hiding it at my friend's house, certain things that are personal to my children. So I had already had wow. some things removed from the house. Not a lot, but just mm -hmm. survival things. And so when I left, it was just like, grab what you can. She came. It was raining like it was a storm that day. <laughs> we were soaked, me and my two girlfriends, and I had my kids in the car, and we left. I went to my domestic violence, sat there for five hours, ended up in a hotel for three weeks. Wow. And never turned back. No, oh, that's wonderful. So from yeah. January to August, you, it was pretty much you was pl planning getting things mm -hmm. ready. And you know, I'm really glad that you kind of, you know, I felt like you was taking us behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, like I felt like I was like in a movie behind the scenes because, you know, putting clothes away and getting things ready, getting things prepared. And, you know, I, I mean, that, that, that I, I, I appreciate that picture. Like I said, I felt like I was like, I was there. I was in a scene. I, I got yeah. a little upset when you said he texted your daughter at madness, but then I kind of calmed myself down. And then I was just captivated into the story that you was telling us as to how you, you know, had to devise this plan and the strategy to move and at the point of a nervous breakdown. And, you know, what, what, this is really powerful because, you know, often say, you know, we go through things and, and it's not just about us or for us. It ultimately, it's going to be to help somebody else that's oh, yeah. going through the, the same thing. And I, I'm believing that the things that you're sharing tonight is going to be something that's going to help somebody because, mm. you know, with all this, the, this, the, the stats that we have, relating to domestic violence, 85% of women um, uh, being abused, uh, one in three women um, are, um, are, are experience physical uh, altercations or violence yeah. with their intimate, one in three, that's one to you, one to you. Um, yeah. You know, we, we, we have all of these stats and uh, not to mention that one in five women uh, in the U.S. is raped, one in five, yeah. you know, so yeah. that's, that, that, that's crazy stat. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have all of these stats, but then I can't help to talk, think about those people, as you alluded to earlier, that don't report it, that don't say nope. anything, that sit silent. You, you it, it took you 18 years. You, you, you put on the show, you, uh, because you were trying to support your husband, trying to be there for him and, 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 and really trying to be there for everybody because yeah. you could have got up one Sunday and said, you know what, y'all, here's really what's going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, Annette, come to the, come up to the pulpit and we want you to open up in prayer. Yeah. I'm gonna open up. All right. You could have done that, but you didn't, yeah. you 
went through it for 18 years. And that's a long time. 18 years, 18 months, 18 weeks, 18 minutes is too long to be in a domestic violent situation or abuse situation. I don't care if it's physical. I don't care if it's emotional. It's not what God intended for an individual to experience in their life. And if Mm -hmm. you're part of that, and I'm I'm glad you said about the the advocacy, um, if you experience a domestic violence, let me throw this number right here. You can call 1-800-799-SAFE, 1-800-799-SAFE, or that is 1-800-799-7233. You know about (laughs) hard, isn't that? (laughs) You know, or hey, listen, if something is popping off right then, you don't have to dial 1-800. You can call 911 and the the boys will be there and, and they'll take care of things, okay? Uh, you don't need to be a part of that. You don't need to be involved in that. And my prayer and my hope is that, you know, we will uh, get people to start using yeah. using their voice and saying something. Now, Ned, let me ask you this. Well, yeah. What did this do? Take me into this. Take us into this. What did this do to your self-esteem and your, self, your self-worth? Oh, wow. I was shattered. I mean, I was still doing Facebook lives. I was trying to do my ministry wow. because that's all I knew. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, Gary, you know, when you walked away, it was still, you still had that cognizant mind saying, you know what? I just want to preach that one message. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, like, you don't, oh, your yeah. mind is just like, but see, it was because I was so used because I did preach. I did services. I did everything, but it was according to how he wanted it, how he saw fit. Um, so it wasn't like me being me doing it the way Annette wanted to do it mm-hmm. because I was actually going by a different name. Cause he said, God called me the spiritual name. So oh, nice. for, yeah, so yeah. we were married 16 years, 16 and a half years, but we were together almost 18. Mm-hmm. So, you know, from the day that, uh, six months before we got married, he changed my name. So that was another thing that shatters your image is when somebody tells you God's not happy with the character of Annette. So now God's going to call you Sarah. So for 16, uh, almost 17 years, my name was Sarah. And I, I, was, in a, I was never identifying with Annette. So you're talking about self-image? Mm-hmm. Terrible. Yeah. Completely shattered. And I'm telling you, I used to dress it up. They used to think I was, oh, you look like a supermodel. Da-da. Inside, I felt like the worst of the worst. I felt mm-hmm. so ugly. I felt so diminished about my character. And I seen every flaw in the mirror and I still struggle with that today I still yeah. struggle with oh well yeah you say I'm pretty yeah whatever like I'm still trying to find that yeah. acceptance and at the same time I'm breaking down walls of yeah. insecurities and concerns about you know me being a mom and you know being a the the best you know person to a friend or to yeah. anyone so but I, I, I haven't stopped you know being me in the sense of you know evolving so I'm, I'm evolving into who Annette is at this age, yes. you know, uh, I had to lean back to my past before my ex-husband to identify with what did I like, yes. you know, what, what kind of music was I listening to? You know, what, what did I really like to talk about? Like mm-hmm. it was, it, you know, I had to really hit the reset button like earlier this year in January, I just really just hit the reset button I'm not doing the ministry thing. I'm not preaching Bible and all of that. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of on my spiritual journey. Yeah. And, you know, I've had people say, oh, you sound like a new ager. I'm like, no, I sound like a net because a net <laughs> is being me evolving to, if it brings me back to what I was doing before and more refined and more mm-hmm. in tune with me, so be it. Yes. But during this journey, it's going to be the way a net does it, not yeah. how someone tells me to do it or, what this means and how I should be and stand up, sit down. It, it, it was just crazy. He actually used to put books on my head and tell me to walk straight because he used to make me feel, he was like, oh, you move your hands too much. That's too masculine. And I used to work out. Oh, you mm-hmm. women aren't supposed to have muscles. And I'm like, I'm a buck 10. Like how much muscle you think <laughs> I'm going to have? Like he would just diminish me completely. Everything I love to do, I stopped completely. And since I've left, I've been small steps to getting back to the things that I like. So, so you know, but yeah. You're trying to find your voice and you're trying yep. to get to know who you are. Let, let me tell you this here and, and let, me, let me make this personal to you. You know, what you've gone through is horrific. Mm. It, it's terrible. I wish to God that you did not have to go through that. But we can't do anything to change that. It has mm. happened. Everything that you experienced, it wasn't your fault. 
it was the fault of the one that made a conscious decision to do what he did to you. Mm -hmm. And in this, I want you to know that there is refining that's taking place. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have to be refined. Sometimes, yep. you know, it, it's a process. You know, people, you know, they'll, people put on weight, right? And, and, and they hadn't worked out in 10 years. And all of a sudden they want to work out one time. They post some pictures on Facebook <laughs> and look, I'm getting my grind. on, I'm getting my work in. That's and it. wait a minute, you still look the same. You know, if you're really working out that hard, there will be some change. Here's, the, here's what I'm saying. It takes time. It's a process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't really know what it looks like until the end of it. It's a process. That's you're true. being processed. You're going through the process of being yeah. healed, of getting your voice back, of getting to know who Annette really is. And mm -hmm. this is for every individual that has had to go through this, who's had to experience this level of abuse to try to, what is my identity? Who am I? Mm -hmm. you know, I've heard of stories where the men would actually tell the women what they could wear and how to wear yep. it. Yep. You know, and now you're telling me and the man put a book on your head and telling you how to walk and all oh. of this. And, you know, so mm -hmm. we're hearing this. Like I said, you're taking us behind the scenes to really to see it from the mm -hmm. eyes of someone that has experienced this on a level for 18 years. So Annette, you, you, you have risen out of this. You're continuing to rise. You're continuing to process yourself through this here. And, and hey, I'm just so happy to be able to witness you on this side. Oh yeah. You've come out yeah. and how you yeah. have now, you know, keeping a smile on your face, continuing to press through. And, and, yeah. and like I said, sometimes we go through things and we don't know yeah. why. We don't know yeah. why we had to experience it. But at the same time, we know it's for a greater good and we yeah. know there is a purpose behind this. You know, I often say there's purpose, you know, sometimes pain leads us to our purpose and mm -hmm. sometimes pain gets our attention like nothing yep. else will. And That's so right. I, I, I'm so, I'm so happy that you're sharing this with us and that you're giving us this, this wonderful information. And once again, it is not to berate anybody, you know, yeah. it, 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 when a person has done wrong, they know they've done wrong. You know, whether they admit it or not, take responsibility, yeah. they know they've done wrong. And every abuser that I've ever spoken to, they know they've done wrong. They know it, you know, well, so. Um, can, I, can I say one yeah. thing? Because I wanna, uh, in, his, in his, not defense, just for, I created a, a tolerable relationship with my mm -hmm. ex-husband because I feel like my children need a father. Mm -hmm. whether, whether he's the way he is, which he, I don't feel that he's really had some huge changes. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I feel like my children, no matter what, still need to create their own relationship with him. Because yes. I've already, I've done that. I separated, but that doesn't mean you should separate. Right. Learn, learn for yourself. But I've created a tolerable relationship with him to the point where he calls me at, at least two, two times, three times a week, where he asks more about my, how I'm doing than my children are. Wow. So, you know, I, I mean, and the thing is, it's like, I know there's agenda behind it because I can, I can see still now that I'm far away from it, it's almost two years. You could see, you could see what it is for what it is once yeah. you step away from it. So you're like, oh, wow, that's so cute of a statement, you know, <laughs> but you know, I know the, the, so when I, I say that to let the women know that leave, you can build, you know, a tolerable relationship. If it's something that's not volatile, mm -hmm. just know. In the back of your mind, you know the game. Yeah. You know the game, mm -hmm. and you've become empowered to detect it and stand in front of it and not be disturbed by it. Yes. You know, yes. and not be and fall right back into it. Mm, that's good. So that's where I'm at with him now. So we are so called friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will say this you're better than a lot of people. <laughs> and, I, just, and I just can't hate. I'm not a hater. Yeah, yeah. I, I will never be a hateful person, and that's just not me. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's good. you just well, can't hurt me no more. Yeah. Hopefully, one day, hopefully, one day, he will come to the place where not only will he, you know, say, oh, hey, we're friends, but I'm truly a sorry for what I've Thanks. done. And, back that up with some action to get some help relating to why yeah. he's done what he's done. 
exactly. you know, and you know, uh, one, one thing that often, like I said, I really want you, everyone to understand this and this, you know, we're not bashing anybody. We're not bashing the church. We're not bashing pastors. Mm -hmm. As I alluded to yesterday, we're talking about our experiences, the things that yeah. we've experienced. We're talking about it from the perspective of, of what I've witnessed when I was a pastor, what I witnessed mm -hmm. now in law enforcement. Oh my gosh, I see it so much. And whether people realize it or not, domestic violence is on the increase. It is going, is, is, is happening more often than not. In fact, in law enforcement, it is one of the things, it is one of the most deadliest calls that we can receive yeah. uh, because yeah. it's so volatile. It is so unpredictable. Things can pop Ugh. off just like that. So, you know, we, we don't take this issue lightly. And I'm hoping mm -hmm. that uh, as a nation, it's just not Domestic Violence Awareness Month, but it is something that we are aware of every day, every year. Uh, all year or every day of the year because it is something that people need help with and women are being broken down torn down children are being placed in situations that is is placing them in jeopardy uh, mentally physically emotionally spiritually mm -hmm. you know all of these different things so i'm hoping that what we're doing here this little something that we're doing here hopefully it can help somebody encourage oh, yeah. them that you can make it you can come out of this and you don't have to stay in a situation that is causing you to be mentally robbed mm -hmm. and, and depleted, uh, that's causing you to be physically put in a position where you're not safe. Uh, you, you know, help. I, I'm hoping that if you know somebody that's in this situation, don't be like the people that was at in that church. Just look, because I'm, I'm almost sure somebody probably saw, detected something. That, that's, that, you know, we are, we are, especially folks that's in church, they can remember but if you I wore the say, same I'm dress. sorry. <laughs> you keep bringing this thing in because I, I don't want to bash the church, but you no, got to understand mm -hmm. these are people in the choir who hold positions in the church, mm -hmm. ministers. You think they want to lose their position of power, a so-called power because it ain't powerful. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, right, if you, if, you know, I, I will, I will quote something my ex-husband did say. He said, uh, you got to remember the beginning of the word minister is many. So you are nothing but a small little person. Mm -hmm. running a church mm -hmm. you're not bigger than anybody in the church or right. god mm -hmm. so you know when you're running it in that fashion you don't lost it anyway at that yeah. point mm -hmm. well because you know i was saying people you know in church we rem people remember what you wore you know three weeks ago you know <laughs> so um, i'm just I'm thinking just saying. <laughs> but they're not because nobody wants to lose i'm sorry yeah. You, yeah. you really think that I'm, I'm not going to say famous names, but let's yeah. say famous minister, multi, mega church, 25, yeah. 20, 30,000 dollars, a thousand seated church. Mm -hmm. You know, sister so-and-so see him smack his wife mm. on, his, on their way out through the back exit. Mm -hmm. are, they, are they really going to report this? Come oh, on, man. Wow. And that, per, that person is on his worship team or on his payroll or, or for whatever position they yeah. have in a church, you think you think they're gonna really report that? They're not. Yeah. They're gonna yeah. keep smiling, grinning, and bearing it because you know it's. And that's that's when you say they have to implement some type of plan. That's the first thing that they need to talk about mm -hmm. to these ministers and to the people in the church. Look, if you report it, then you're not gonna lose your seat. You yeah. you you need to be brave enough and bold enough so that we could check that thing. Yeah. But people, they need to be reassured that if they do speak, that they're not gonna lose something. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that, that that's really why it runs so rampant and silently in the church. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and you're and you're so correct. It is it is definitely something that uh, once again I stated, I'm hoping that churches all over put something in place because we know that uh, I know that churches are an are an intricate part of our communities uh, yeah. when it's done correctly. And I'm hoping that churches will have something in place so that when these things manifest, doesn't matter if it's the pastor, assistant pastor, praise leader, uh, the deacon, the usher, the sound man, the videographer, whoever it is, that there's something that can be placed, put in place that will, first of all, get the abused, the victim safe, safe, make them safe. And mm -hmm. then if they want to proceed something to getting them some help, then that's what they can do, but please have something in place. Annette, mm -hmm. you know what? I, I'm so uh, thrilled that you, you came on here tonight and, and, and we, we spoke about this issue. Uh, yeah. Once again, I want to reiterate that my, we know that men are abused too. Yeah. And we know that a lot of men don't, men don't report it. Nope. My focus based upon the statistics that I have is focusing on the females that are being abused. So uh, please, and for, for um, pastors out there that may hear this, we're not bashing the church. I'm, you, I will never bash the church, but I will call it out for when I see what is wrong because <laughs> I, 
I've, I've been in, I've, I was in it long enough to know, and I know enough that if I really wanted to say some stuff, I could say some stuff. I know a lot. I know a lot of people. So um, I'll leave it at that. You read between the lines and, 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 and I'll leave it like that. But the reality is this here. We have to stop being silent about this issue and we got to speak up and say something. Enough is enough yes. because you have, you know, a daughter, you have daughters. I have mm -hmm. daughters. I'm so, I'm so elated that I have blessed son-in-laws that, mm. that, that, that love, love their wives, my daughters yeah. for who they are and that treat them well. And I mean, it is a wonderful thing to see. And mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was always taught, you don't put your hands on a woman negative. Mm -hmm. That's a no, 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 no. So mm. um, I want to just, someone that's out there that's going through, let, let, let's take a minute, Annette, take a minute and, and talk to that woman that's being abused right now. This is mm -hmm. the last opportunity that, that you will have. Just, just imagine this is the last moment you have to talk to her. What would you mm -hmm. say to her? Well, I, I would say, you know, I follow my plan, create a plan, an exit plan. And, you know, don't be too quick to leave unless it's really, really a bad situation. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you can devise an exit plan, find one to two trustworthy people, confide in them and really just start getting bits and pieces of what's important to you out of that house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, join a domestic violence program, call your local domestic violence program. Um, there are programs out there and they will help and they will get you as far as they can get you. Mm -hmm. But I say to you, be strong, look at yourself in the mirror and be courageous. You're not, you're not weak. You're not someone that's worthless because you've been in a situation for so yes. long, yes. but you are worth it. You are valuable and you are needed. And if you're at the brink of suicide, I even speak to that because I yes. was there too. Mm -hmm. We're going to speak to the suicide and tell it to be gone because yes. you need to survive because this world needs you. If you have children, your children need you. Get your exit plan in order and don't be afraid. Reach out to me. I'm always here. You yes. can always message me if you're listening to me right now. Um, I do advocacy work and I offer free life coaching to all those that have been abused. That's good. That's wonderful. And that, that is good information. Uh, listen, this was a great show tonight and I'm so glad that yeah, and that you was with us. And once again, we're not going to stop talking about this issue. We're going to have to bring no. you back and we're going we're gonna to keep on pushing this. I already told Dr. Nichols that we might have a part three, four, five, six, 10, 20, 40, 50. <laughs> so we're going to keep talking about it. You know, what my, what my desire is with this when it was on my heart to, to do this, you know, show is to talk about life issues, you know, mm. to talk about things that we deal with, things that we go through, real stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we all know how to put on the front and act like we're all good. You, you, you spoke to that tonight. Yeah. And we've learned that we've mastered that as, as human beings. We know how, yeah. how you're doing. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. When in reality, <laughs> there's, a, there's tears and pain behind that smile. Yes, there and is. So we've learned how to do that. But uh, the, the objective of this show is to talk about life issues, but to encourage people in it and through it so that they can be better when they come out of it. And yeah. uh, that's my objective. Not to, you know, like I said, we're not bashing anybody. It doesn't, like I said, uh, this whole domestic violence, it doesn't, it, it happens in, with CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, with top execs and all of these uh, big businesses. It happens in professional sports. It it's happens in the medical field. It happens in every arena of life. Trust yeah. me. And mm -hmm. so- what we, we, we want to talk about this because we want people that's going through this to get delivered. I believe in restoration. I believe, I believe I, I'm hoping that if there's a man, there's an abuser that's listening to this and that's watching this and that one day perhaps will see this and that will come to a, to, to, to a place in their heart where they say, I need to, I need to change. I need to go and talk to somebody. I need to get some help to address mm -hmm. this internal struggle that I'm having yeah. that's causing me to abuse the one that I'm supposed to be loving. And yeah. so I'm, I'm hoping to God that one day we'll see that and we'll see men that were abusers get on a platform like this and talk. Yeah. This yeah. is what I did. And I'm so sorry for it. And ladies, this is how you can recognize, you know, when the trouble is coming. So Annette, yeah. um, I want, uh, you, you mentioned you, that video. I saw that video and that was you, when you bit the apple and you threw the apple. Yeah. Yeah. The don't <laughs> so, it's called the don't rush challenge. 
for domestic violence, we did that. Yeah. So now, yeah. what was the apple about? I, 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 I was, I, oh. I, I, I wanted to text you and say, "Hey, what was the apple about?" Because it was a cool actually, scene. I did post a video explaining it. Um, actually, I was on a live broadcast that morning that we launched a video. Okay. So I, I just cropped the part that I talked about the apple part, mm -hmm. and I posted it on social media because I know people were like, "What was that?" But to, to just put it in sub simplistic terms, you know, I basically. You know, Adam and Eve bit the apple. Eve bit the apple. So you know, it's always the woman's fault. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, the doggy, okay. you know, it's always the doggy dog world. You know, the man subserv, the woman subservient to the man, the dominating force. The scriptures are completely tainted and distorted. You know that a man has to be the driving force and the head of the house and this and that. When and when all of that is manipulated, it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm biting the apple, saying, look, you know what? Take your little theology and your ideology that's distorted because there's men, men out there running with that theory, beating on women, mm -hmm. you know, treating women like garbage, talking down to them, you know, disrespecting them, and, and they do it at home. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm going to take a bite out of this apple. I'm going to throw it at you and see what you're going to do with it. Now that you got the information I'm trying to give you, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to change your theory mm -hmm. and your theology and your concepts? about women, whether it's in a church, in the business world, you know, at home, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? Because that concept is so heavy and ingrained in our minds mm, yeah. because of the forbidden apple. I mean, come on. Yeah. I, I, you know, That's I, a saw whole that. Subject for another yeah, I, I, I saw that and I was like, <laughs> you know what? I, I was going to text you, but I was, I was so busy and everything. about I said, I got, I, when I, I talk, I got to find out what was the <laughs> apple about. And then you, and then you lean forward, like, now take that. Oh, yeah. I was like, okay, that was pretty cool. I see it. I it's see just it. saying you don't control yeah. me anymore. You know, yeah. like you control me with, with your doctrine. You control me with, you know, your, you know, your manipulation and all of that. But you know what? I'm not in control anymore uh, with you under con your control. I'm not being controlled by anybody. I'm not being controlled by a denomination, mm -hmm. by a, a church, a ministry, a man, yeah. a person, a place, a thing. I'm just trying to evolve and just be, you. be me. That's can you it. do me a favor? Can you can you uh, put that video on my timeline? Okay, put that video oh, yeah. on my timeline so people can see it. I think that'd be pretty cool. But Nat, you know what? Thank you so much once again for joining me. I, I really appreciate you. I appreciate you know what what is happening in your life and and how you're coming out and how you're you know getting your voice back, getting your smile back, getting that joy back, and and you're learning just how to be you now, who you were yeah. created to be. And I really appreciate that. And you know, once you find your voice and once you find that man, you're going to soar. You can go, you can be uh -huh. you know, all that you want and desire to be. And that's mm -hmm. a wonderful thing. And once again, for those out there that perhaps are going through this, uh, the National Domestic Violence Hotline is 1-800-799-SAFE. That's S-A-F-E, or the number would be, the last four digits would be 7233. Um, if you need help, please pick up the phone and call. Um, if you're in a, a, a dangerous situation, you need like right now help, right now assistance, yes. pick up that phone and call 911. And I promise you the boys in blue or green and tan will be there and uh, to help you, to assist you, to get you out of that mm -hmm. situation. Um, once again, and then thank you so much. And um, I'm so excited about what, I'm, I'm excited about your future, you know? So keep on pushing <laughs> forward, keep on smiling, <laughs> keep on having that joy and throw that apple, sis. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. And Much thank everyone love. for watching. I appreciate you and look forward for the next show. Uh, I got some new shows coming up that's going to be off the chart. That's going to be crazy. It's going to be bananas. It's going to be something that people say, oh, okay, he's going there. Oh, yeah, I'm going there. Oh, yeah, we're going. <laughs> I'll be with you. <laughs> All right. All right, Ned. Thank you so much, sis. Right. God bless be everybody blessed. on Facebook. You all have a wonderful evening. Get you some rest. And I'm happy. Right. I know it's late out there. All right. God All bless right. you. Peace. Peace out. <laughs> all right. Uh.